All right, I'm going to show you the sophisticated model of this energy harvester, but it's Gibbs enclosed free energy. There's a box, a metal box, nothing gets out, but electrons can go in because the, everything is flooded with electrons, even outer space, and I can prove that because they use solar panels on the, on the space station to harvest the light. So obviously, the light particles, as I show you, are particles, and that's, that's one particle being pulled out of the wave, because you can accelerate light. A lot of things are not correct now. If we can accelerate that light and create this extreme energy right here, we can harvest it right here with a collector and run that electron power out to drive whatever we want out of this device and never ever do any you don't need to do anything with it ever it will power itself by the excess power because we're harvesting about 200 times what we're using to to put into this so we're getting let's say even a hundred times more power than we're putting in and it doesn't matter because we can put as much power we want in because it can make more power out so even this tiniest little device hold on one second now, the reason this will work is that light is particles, and those particles actually make up photons and neutrons. They're not one gigantic photon and one gigantic neutron. They are, where is my model? Here it is right there. They are a ton of electrons, and every one of these little balls is a dipole, and they cling to each other because they're little magnetic particles. Well, they get to a certain size. 1839 is a proton, which is a charged particle. That means it wants one more electron to become a neutron. Simple as that. And an electron is simply one that wants to get in, and that it says, I have plenty, stay out. That's what quantum is. And it depends on how big this ball is. That ball may be hydrogen, which is 1,840 or so. Or it might be plutonium, which is 38, uh, 358,000. And it de then that depends on how many will try to want to get into it. And at some point, it'll be unstable, and it will fission by itself and fall apart like radioactive particles. Like, this measures radioactive decay. And it measures it in millisieverts, which are the tiny, tiny, tiny little bits. And everything decays. A little bit here, a little bit there. It's okay. It won't hurt you, because all you're getting is like, like one of these. Well, when you have fission of plutonium, you're getting one of these. That's not going to help you. That's going to hurt. That's like getting, it's like hitting you with a BB is the light and hitting you with a 50 caliber machine gun bullet. It's totally different. Everything's different. And it's just the size of the particle, and that's the fission. Now, we started with light, so the only thing we can do is divide the light, and that is exactly what happens here. That is a, oops, a division of the light, and I will prove it to you right this instant. All right, now these come green, they come red, they come blue, and I don't know, they might come other colors, I don't know. But I know we've seen those. And all you have is a dark particle attached to a bright particle, and then back to back they make a photon. So, like this, they come red and they come black, I mean uh, red and, and green and blue. So, same thing. And so you have a muon attached to a red particle, and it's spinning sort of slow. It's like this, and it's spinning slow like that. Then you have green attached to the black particle. Same deal, but it's spinning fast, a little faster. And then you have blue to the black particle, and it's spinning real fast. So the spinning, the angular momentum, they call it, the spin, is what really does the impact. Because they may go the same speed. I don't know. I can't verify that. If somebody could, I'd like to see them. But I can tell you what, that's what the particle is. And back to back, it is a photon. And, and there it is right there. I'll show you that right in a second. That's the photon. Okay? And that only happens, you only see it as it's about to concuss. Now, if we could separate that into an electron, which we can, which means all you're going to see is the black and the white, and then we can in additionally separate the black from the white, 
that's when we get our power. So let's go right into the whole deal here. All right, so I tell you red and black the same thing. See, here's a red one, same one, same deal. All right, so red and black, and the other are black and white. They're black and white, but it, the, the glow of the whole thing is red, and the glow of the other one was, was green, and the glow of this one is blue. Blue is so fast that you really can't see the division of powers like you can with the red and the green. But anyway, it normally would come through like this, and that's as much power as you're going to get out of this red laser. However, if you put it through a Venturi and force the fields that surround that particle, you see that particle? You see, oh, it's a little particle. Well, yes, it is. But that little particle has a field this big around. And I'm not kidding you. It's it absolutely enormous. So as it comes through a Venturi like this, the field has to crush. When it does, it that's any time you have push to shove and that's all it is because light is nothing more than a particle just like the particles on your hand and when you push them and shove them they warm up they heat they glow they have energy that's it now what can we do with that energy if we can get it in the right place and we can if we can get it right here before it comes back to the black particle that was attached to it because right now the white is completely gone from the black and I will show you that right now and that is what's called muons bosons you see that it, it, it was like this before you saw it now there's nothing but and it's because we put it through the venturi the black somehow has to can't go through there i don't know why to be perfectly honest with you but the black is gravity and it wants to pull the white ones back to them and it does back here so this is a very very tiny distance but if we put a harvest plate right in here and never let them come back like that and drain them down, and I have the model right here, I have it all drawn up, and we're going to go over it in a minute, but this is it right here, how we can do it, and this is the devices, we may need a Tesla coil, we may need a Van de Graaff generator to do some regulation, we need a little storage in here, so forth, um, but it's, I think it's going to be very simple. Let's do, let's talk about free energy for everybody, and it, and I'm talking about within weeks, not not years. Okay, my friends, I finally came to the conclusion that we can absolutely create free energy, and we can do it by using fission. And you'd say, oh, fission, that's creating gigantic heat, like um, power plants. No, we created fission on the subatomic level. Fission is the splitting of atoms. Well, what are atoms made of? What are they made of? That's what the CERN and all of them are trying to figure out. They take these atoms and they smash them together, these protons, and they see what the bits are, are and they try, that's the subatomic particles. Then they try to figure out what is this thing made of. Well, those protons, I, have, I know what they're made of, and I'll show you what they're made of. But we're, they're splitting big things. What we, so, in other words, fission is the splitting of huge, whoops, big atoms, either by radioactive decay, that means they're so big that they fall apart and they split, or by slamming them together. That's what CERN does, but we do it on the light level, and I can show you that we can fission light particles, which gives us tabletop fission, portable fusion, energy that is just incredible. Now, I'm going to explain to you about the difference between protons and neutrons and electrons. And trust me, I understand that I did this 50 years ago, and I've been following it and chasing it ever since, and I now fully understand it from the light experiments we have been doing. And I'm going to go through it right now, but I'm going to first, before I even get showing to you what they consider to be a proton and a neutron and an electron and how light moves and so forth and what a photon is, I am going to actually show you those particles and then I'll explain them to you. All right, here's the issue. They don't realize that light is a particle. They don't know. You look at incoherent, incoherent light beam. 
not a light beam, it's a particle. They don't know whether it's a wave or a particle because they don't realize that the particle has a huge magnetic wave. Now this is actually spinning and what they are really looking at is this. It's this. Okay, it's two particles interfering with each other and spinning together and I can show you this and I will right now and then we're going to go into the free energy. Alright, that's a single slip. The light particle is spinning this way, you see, and there's a whole batch of them, they're all over the place coming this way. So it's spinning, some spin off to that side, some spin here and there and there, and then they go over this way too, to that side. So, but they're pushing each other and shoving each other, so they set up these interference patterns. And they're interfering with each other. They say, you stay away from me, I'll stay away from you. And they sort of collect in these little bump spots. But you can see the bumps are made of more than one. They're made of like three little spots together, if you go back and you look at it very carefully. And you can see this is just exactly like a drill bit, because it's spinning. It's spinning up there and then down around here, and up over the top and down around here, and then you can see it. It's a, it's like a propeller. It's spinning. Now, I have other shots, but I don't. Well, let me see if I can find one more. Hold on. All right, this is a laser, and that's these are the spinning discs. I mean, di spinning particles, and they're interfering with each other, sort of staying in their own little lines. Now some of them will sort of interact with each other and that's where you're going to see a lot more glow. Where they are away from each other, you see the darkness. Anytime you have push to shove one particle against another, you will see glow. And that's heat and that's energy. And we increase the energy value exponentially at that venturi. But this is very cool stuff, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, so you know that when we are at this point, from here, if we can harvest this energy, we have increased the value way more than we started with. Here is the electron flood model, which would lead to free energy. Very, very small laser, not, you know, because lasers can be very, very, very powerful and very, very compact and small now. And that emits all those pulses. You saw them before, and they look like waves, only there's a particle inside, and it accelerates and explodes at a venturi, and then we get the white spray, which is right there. And that is where we have to harvest it, right there. And it's about 200 times increased. They call them WZ bosons, whatever they call them. But we know we have seen the particles. There's no question the particle was here. And there's no question the particle accelerated. There's no question the particle split. There's no question the particles want to be back together. There's no question that there's a zero blackness in here. So if we can get this power, we have increased the value of the particle exponentially. And then I'm going to show you the device that I, you know, that I think will work fine. And it's very simple. All right, this is the simplest, simple explanation. And then we're going to go to the more complex explanation for it's a little more engineered. Basically, we have that laser that I talked about. Right, right on the face of it, it, you know, just right next to it, you're going to have a little venturi that forces the light to compress as it comes out. And it's in not this, not far away at all, very, very close. And then you're going to have the harvest plate right after the venturi, which is this right here. Now, we need to make some type of metal to metal which pushes and shoves and sucks and so forth because you can do that with these you can see you can make them attract you can make them push we need them to make them push this way away from the collector down into power out or into some storage device that is the, the and this is blocked in this is nothing here whatsoever is is um does anything once you build it and you put the bolts on it you make it put it together it's done and it's in a box and that's it and then you're going to have you can plug your plugs into it that's just good that's it and then you never have to do anything it will power itself forever and it will sense what is needed i mean you may, you may have to have some regulation but where is going to get the power from if it's a box where does that electricity come it, it draws it from the ether and the ether is everywhere the ether where did this come from? How did that explode like that? 
and, and where is it pulling these particles back from? They're in the ether, and they're in the ether of space. And you say, oh, no, they're not in the ether of space. Yes, they are. Because the solar collectors and the panels of the space station collect tons of additional energy. They can't, can't use it all. So don't tell me there's no particles in space. I showed you these are particles. They are particles. There's no way you can say they're not particles, and they want to be glued together. But when we put them through these venturis, it's a whole different story. And we can do this in space. We can do this on Earth. We can do this flying around in our airplanes. We can do this in our cars. We can do this walking around in our back pocket. Because these things can be tiny, tiny, tiny devices, much smaller than this. These, these little thin film, you know, um, solar collectors and solar um, 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 photon emitters and so forth and lasers, they're not big at all now. And we may need to add a couple of other devices which may make it a little bit bigger, but not much. A little bit. I'll show you. Because we may need some extra electrons. Once we're in this realm, we can do a bunch of different things. Because once these are apart, they have to come back together. What are they going to come back together as light? Probably. But we may be able to make them come back together as actual molecules. If we had enough frequency modulation in there to say, and stabilize at 2300 hertz, which is, let's say, carbon or whatever it is. Boom and then we'd lock it in there. And that may be possible. We may be able to make clean water, we may be able to make uh, clean air, we may be able to make gold, and any, any molecule and any atom you want. Because these are nothing more than a ball of little particles I showed in a minute ago. I can't find my little device. But it's a, just nothing more than a ball of electrons. And those electrons split into these and when if we could shake them in the right molecule boop, they can come back into that that's my way of thinking and if we could do that we could make literally anything so first of all if we can make light i mean we can make this free energy from this light we're good to go and then after that we may be able to make molecules right but we need to do something to, to change the way people have our, our economic life and also to save this planet. Because if we don't do something, it's all over for everybody. And the misery is just unbelievable what I see. So let's see if we can do something. Let me show you the actual device. And I want somebody to create these free energy devices and literally make them and, and just make parts and make them free for anybody. And, and, you know, not give them away, but make it so that anybody can get one of these. Because they're going to be dirt cheap. And I'm talking dirt cheap. Watch. All right. I like to do things in journals, so I'm not going to copy it again on the whiteboard. But here's the deal. You have a pulse red laser or any kind of laser, whatever color. Blue be probably is going to be best. Now, you have to have power to power the laser, obviously. Where are you going to get the power from? You're going to get it from the free energy we created. So we saw that we could increase the value of the wave exponentially and harvest after the venturi right here in a collector plate. We're going to harvest up all as much as we can and force it down. Somehow we have to make a, a cage to force it down into and, and and then I can that's not going to be hard trust me that won't be hard you need the right kind of materials and laminate them in such a way and alloys and so forth to oppose the electrons from going any other way than this way then what happens is in here let me see I gotta see if I can see what I wrote <laughs> all right this is here's your electron collector it's a solar basically the solar panel now the electron flow is coming this way. You need a capacitor. You need well. You need all the net normal stuff you need to work with electricity: capacitor, filter, regulator, rectifier. You know, creating the AC and the DC and the outputs and all that stuff is going to happen in some kind of little regulator box. Very, very simple. Now, we may need a Van de Graaff generator. Now, a Van de Graaff generator is very, very simple, very small device, and it would be grounded to these, the, the metal box that everything else is going to be grounded to. Okay. Now, 
very simple little device and all it does is it can push electrons one way or pull them. It can push and pull electrons and it, you can go up and get sparks from it. It's pretty cool. I don't know if we need it or not. And also Tesla coil. We're going to be pulling electrons. We're going to be pulling a ton of electrons out of this box. Where do electrons going to come from? Well, they're, they're not going to come from in the box. They're going to have to come from outside the box. That's the ether. That's the ether that's outside, because it's, it, it's just like the solar panels. Where'd they come from? Where'd those particles come from? They came from outside the box into the solar panels. It's the same thing we're going to do here, only it's going to suck them through the metal of the box. Now, it might have to be copper. It might have to be some type of a certain metal that would want to attract these other electrons that are just floating around because they're everywhere. Photons of light is everywhere. And it doesn't even have to be light because every everything right here, all over here is nothing but little particles. Everything here. And in space it's the same stuff. There's no vacuum in space. Totally wrong about a lot of things. Anyway, but we're going to need some extra electrons either from out here or from in here. We may need a Tesla coil. A Tesla coil does nothing more than it uses some electrons, but it takes copper and it forces the copper to flow electrons into the air. And then you get, you get all this static and stuff going on because the air says, I don't want any more electrons. It's too bad you're going to get them. Nicola says they're coming. Now, the electrons will be extracted from where? And that is the ether. Now, what do I got down here? Tesla, I don't know whether we need that or not. Electrons flow in from outside the case as ether. And there are extra electrons and there are photons in space. They're just floating around everywhere. Uh, what variables are there? This color, power, venturi, the design, the material, the gain medium, the Tesla, the Van der Graaff. Then you have something that's called TEMS. We don't need to go into that. There's different looking patterns of, of light. And, you know, we need to look into everything, but you don't need to. Uh, where are you going after this? Oh, metacide. Menticide. <laughs> That's making people believe what you want them to believe, no matter whether it helps them or hurts them. Very, very subtle stuff going on. Anyway, I, I'm pretty good at this stuff. So, if any, you know, and I showed you what I showed you. So I don't see why we can't get free energy in a week or two. And this is not me, this is CERN. I showed you the black and white particles together are the muons and the muon neutrinos. I mean electron and uh, muon neutrinos. And then when they concuss, they explode into the white and the black balls. But particles of light are like this. They're looking at smashed up particles and they're finding these little particles. They didn't realize, I don't think, that they were attached together to begin with. And I don't think they were realized whatsoever that they were part of photons. Because photons are the smallest particle that exists that's semi-stable. Electrons are not stable. They want to incorporate into something. That's why they zzz, and then they call it lightning and they, they want to incorporate. They are the damagers. These are the bouncers. So once again, these are the um, electron shower particles and these are the muons. And as they come forward, this is the leading forward one, it smashes into whatever's in front of it and says, get out of the way. Now, they wobble and spin and do all that stuff, as I showed you. I, you saw them spinning and so forth. But um, the key here is that there's energy and anti-energy. This is on, only this thing does is, is attract the white ones. That's it's the only thing it does. It does. It wants to be next to a white one, all continuously. It doesn't matter being next to the black one. So what happens is when you start to build mass, the white ones literally surround the black ones, and the black ones go to the center, and that really might be what they consider the black hole. Uh, yeah, black hole. And then just to drill it in a little deeper. Don't forget that's where it exploded. This was the particle. I just showed you a second ago, the glowing white particle and the black particle attached, having a good time together. Not until they hit that venturi, boom, separated. And here we have to draw this energy off 200 times. They claim, that's the, that was, that's the claim by NASA, it's 200 times increase.
or CERN or all of them fairly loud. And the crazy thing is, not a single one of them will respond to me. I've put this up over and over and over for years now. And I'm daily, I'm sending them to the same people. And they won't, actually, I, I saw them sort of make fun of me. Uh, you know, at Fermi Lab, Don Lincoln got out there and made, oh, there's some guy on the internet saying you can see this and you can do this, muons and everything. Don't listen to him. Look at my equipment. And he was acting like a robot drunk. And then Christy Duffy, which is uh, Kirsty Duffy, I think her name is, she's uh, on other Fermi Lab. She says, if anybody says they can see muons, they're lying. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, that's muons. The, the black particle was attached to the white particle. It's just, it's just exactly what they showed. If, you, if we can debate and talk about it, and then you call me a liar, well, tell me why I'm a liar. Tell me why I'm a drunk robot. That's all I'm asking for is a day in court. And this is our day in court, because I'm going to tell you what, my friends, right now, our planet is in such desperate condition because they don't even understand that the problem we are having is that the light coming at our planet is scrubbing against the atmosphere that we have, causing extreme friction at the outer atmospheres, scrubbing that magnetic field of particles, causing 2,700 degrees on the outside of our atmosphere, and only 100 and something or 100-ish on the surface. 2,700 out there, that's because it's scrubbing against the particles coming at the Earth. And they don't even understand that. They don't understand light. They don't understand gravity. It's because they have the wrong atomic model to start with. Electron flood theory solves the whole situation, and we need to do this to get free energy. And I think we can do it within the Gibbs free energy device that I just showed. And I, it's a tragedy not to, to react to this. Let me put it that way. Somebody's got to do it. That's why I'm throwing it out to the world, because it's not being taken care of by the people we trusted to do the things we had hoped they would do. Nobody will intervene or interact or discuss anything that puts them outside of their realm of comfort zone. Whether or not the Earth is destroyed, which is very, very soon. All right, I love you all. I'd like to see some free energy for everybody. I'd like to see everybody on an equal footing. We could clean up the water. We could clean up the air. We could, you know, fix things and, start, and, and have everybody have a happy, peaceful life where we don't have to all compete for the same resources. It's a win, 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 win times infinity. If we could do this, and I, what I showed, if you could tell me why it won't work, I want to know why it won't work. All right, I'm going to leave it at that. I love you. I just want to push this one more last time. What we are doing is expanding our envelope of gases, which means as we burn things and turn solid things into gases, it just blows it up like a balloon. So more we push out, more we scrub against what's coming at us. And what's coming at us is a ton of scrubbing particles, and we're scraping against there. That's why we have an intense amount of heat, where the daytime, is just, it's not that the light can't get out, that's where the heat is coming in, it's just a scrub, and as it scrubs out here, it's extremely hot, like 2700 degrees, and that radiates down, it's not, that's the issue, it's the more scrub, and the more balloon, the more scrub, and the same thing with the, mo the sun, we're all spinning through the galaxy together, and the sun leads us. And we're trying to catch up to it because its dark matter wants to pull all of us towards it as well. The dark matter is an is extremely attractive force. When a Milky Way is going that way, the sun is being pulled through it. And its dark matter is extremely you know, attractive. So all of us are trying to catch up to it. And it's being ripped through an arm on a Milky Way. And if you want to travel through space, I'm going to show you where the place you should travel. All right, remember I showed you we're going to need some ether, called aether, ether, however you want to pronounce this. You've got to stay in these white zones. If you stay in the white zones, you're going to have a lot of extra electrons because white means extra electrons. And this is nothing more than, like, because all there's so many electrons pushing at this, moving this way, it's pushing the arms back. And then that's push to shove, push to shove, push to shove, push to shove. But it's more wrenching, and the center is just going to keep getting tighter and tighter and tighter and condensing. That's condensation means glow. 
and these every, every arm is a condensing factor so if you're going to travel through the Milky Way or any other galaxy make sure you stay in the white spots and that way there you'll have enough extra electrons to power your Gibbs free energy device have a nice day I say it's absolutely certain that we can get free energy from the aether, ether, however you want to pronounce it, in space because they're doing it right now with the space station. According to ancient and medieval science, aether, ether, aether, awa, or ether, and also called quintessence, is called the fifth element. It's the material that fills the region of the universe above the terrestrial sphere. Well, what's the terrestrial sphere? That's the terrestrial. The terrestrial means Earth. Sphere means above, uh, above the terrestrial sphere means whatever is in the gases and primarily for me ether is out in here in space we know a hundred percent you hear the particles they're spinning towards earth they concuss and at our ionosphere out here ion means extra electrons it's, just, it's, it's unbelievable they haven't put this together it really is it's just knocks me out every day. It's completely loaded with this ether. They knew this a bazillion years ago. And we are enlightened now, so we dismissed everything. And in order for you to pass in school, you have to say exactly what they tell you to say. Don't start trouble. I started trouble, and and I was thrown away, basically. All my ideas have been dismissed, and, and no matter what you come up with for facts, unless you are the leader at that point, you are dismissed. There was one of the big shots said that science advances one funeral at a time. <laughs> and is that's a fact. The guy's got to die off before somebody else can come along. <laughs> that's what you call de devolution. <laughs> Oh, man, I'll tell you, I, this has been a trip that I just can't even imagine. We are loaded with these particles in space. We can have free energy within a couple of weeks. Please, somebody step up. I mean, they got these guys with billions of dollars. All they want to do is ride out into space. And, and, I, I, and, and they're claiming they want to save everything, and everybody's jumping up and, oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. I've been sending this off for years. And if somebody can come up with a contraindication for what I'm saying, I want to hear it. And I want to debate. And I want to discuss. And I want to forum. And if that's, the, you know, I can't get through to my government. I pay taxes. <laughs> I'd like to know why I, I'm not being hurt. I'm paying for this space race business. All right, please. Thank you. Have another sterling day.